What is up everyone? It's Paul here, aka 90s Handheld Gamer, and recently an awesome YouTuber by the name of Fem Trooper put out a video talking about games that she couldn't put down, and her video got me thinking, took me down a trip back to memory lane, thinking about all the childhood games that I just played the heck out of and could not put down. So that's what I'm going to talk about here today. And the first game that I was just really hooked on as a kid was Pokemon Yellow. I don't have a physical copy to show off because, unfortunately, I traded all my games as a kid like a dumb kid that I was. But I was just so hooked on that game. I can't even imagine or think back on how many times I beat that game between all the different versions. Because what I would actually do is... I would take my Pokemon game and just keep trading it into a local game store for the different versions. So I experienced Pokemon Yellow, Blue, and Red, all three of them, and I would constantly play with different teams, and I was just so hooked on that game as a kid. That was the first big, grand adventure game that I had ever played, and back in those days, it felt like almost like an open-world game. I mean, the Kanto region was just so huge. And one thing that I love about those old school Pokemon games is that they had more of a challenge to them than the newer games. I mean, the newer games are like walk in the park, but back then, like you actually had to kind of strategize a bit. You had to save your potions with you when you went through these long caves and all that, and you had to survive. And as a kid, I would black out quite a bit in these games, meaning, you know, all my Pokemon fainted and you're back at the Pokemon Center, but... Gen 1 of Pokemon, in my opinion, is still peak. I'm a Kanto fan for life. Donkey Kong Country is one of the first games that I ever played back on the Super Nintendo as a kid. And right away, it was a game that I absolutely loved. The gameplay was a lot of fun. The characters were cool. The art style was phenomenal. But it wasn't until I got the game on my Game Boy Advance in elementary school that I actually went on to beat this game. And I was an extended day at school, which meant like after school, I had to wait till my mom picked me up. It was basically like the school daycare program and it was really boring. But one game that saved me was Donkey Kong Country because every day after school, I would keep on playing this game until I finally got up to King K. Rule and I swear, it must have taken me like a hundred times at the age of nine to beat King K. Rule, but eventually I finally did it, and then I went on to beat the game multiple times. I definitely spent a lot of time playing Donkey Kong Country, and until this day, I still believe that it is one of the greatest 2D platformers of all time, and for nostalgic purposes, I actually do want to rebuy that Game Boy Advance version of the game. Again, it is unique. It has some unique features to it. So I had no business being so into this kind of entertainment as a young child. I believe I was in middle school at the time, but I was really into hip hop since my elementary school days. And when I heard about the video game, Def Jam Fight for New York, I begged my mother to buy me this game. Because this game was basically like the smash ultimate of a rapper fighting game. I mean, this game had everyone from Snoop Dogg, David Banner, Busta Rhymes, Ludacris, Method Man, Red Man, Ghostface Killer. The list goes on. But it wasn't just the rappers and the rap music, the hip hop culture that sold this game to me. This game actually had phenomenal gameplay. This is one of the greatest fighting games of all time that I really regret trading in as a kid because the game is worth like $200 now. It's crazy. So I had this game on the Nintendo GameCube and I would just play this game back to back to back. I would literally spend the whole day sometimes just starting the game over and beating it from start to finish. And there were some annoying fights in the game, like fighting Danny Trejo when he would throw you into the train tracks and you got ran over. It was a pretty violent game, but it was just so much fun. It was also really cool how you could basically pimp your created character out. You had all kind of cool brands from like 
Air Jordan, Fat Farm back then. You could customize your sneakers, your bling, the chains, the earrings, all that kind of stuff. And it was just such a good game. Man, I really wish I never traded it. So although the Nintendo 64 was the first console that I owned as a kid, I never did own Super Mario 64. But when I got a Nintendo DS later on, I was super hyped to pick up Super Mario 64 DS because the game looked even more appealing to me with the inclusion of new characters like Luigi, Wario, and Yoshi. And I just have to say that I just sunk an unbelievable amount of hours into this game as a kid. I would just replay the game so much. I really enjoyed it. I know this version of Mario 64 gets hated on a lot for having crappy controls, but as far as the content goes, I truly believe that it is the definitive version of this game, and the mini games in it were also a lot of fun. I know they were also in New Super Mario Bros. for the DS, but Man, Super Mario 64 DS, I just can't even remember how many hours I put into it. I know I must have put at least 100 hours into that game as a kid. It was definitely a game that I could not put down. Now, the next game that I'm going to talk about, I truly spent an unhealthy amount of time playing. When it comes to all the games that I've ever played in my entire life, I think this one probably easily takes the cake. And that game is Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. When I was in middle school, I just beat this game maybe 10, 15, 20 times. I don't even know. Summer vacation, I was just playing this game all summer long, beating it back to back. And this game was just really fun, I have to say. I had never seen an open world game with the scope that this game had at the time. You were basically going through the whole state of California or at least the major cities and the country sections you basically had places based on LA San Francisco and even Las Vegas thrown in there and there was a really cool mission where you could break into area 51 get a jet pack this game was just over the top it was a lot of fun I would do all the gang territory stuff where you could take over all the territories and get paid from it so basically my whole map in Los Santos would be green because you know it's GSF for life Grove Street families. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I just played this game so much as a kid that I probably wouldn't even want to play it anymore because I want to have new experiences. Um, and I just think I had my fill of this game, but it's definitely still one of the best open world games of all time. Another game that I just could not stop playing as a kid was Grand Theft Auto Liberty City Stories. I truly believe that that game is the most underrated in the series and that game was just a lot of fun and I believe that was actually my first experience playing online as a kid back on the PSP. I remember there was some type of mode where it would make one character wear a chicken suit and I think you would be like the target and you had to survive with everybody going up against you but anyway the single player campaign in this game is truly what shined the missions were over the top and fun. Um, it was just Grand Theft Auto with the personality from back then. Probably wouldn't be approved for today's political climate. But I remember there was these crazy missions that you would do for the Catholic priest who the protagonist would confess his sins to. And he would tell him that if he wanted to make things right, he would have to go whack these people who he told them to. But it was just a great mafia story. It took the world of Grand Theft Auto 3 and just made it even better, made the gameplay better. And it was truly a phenomenal game that I know for a fact I beat multiple times as a kid, at least a good five to ten times, probably even more than that. Now for the final game that I'm going to talk about, it is another Grand Theft Auto, but at least at this point, I was in like high school, like a freshman playing this game, and that is Grand Theft Auto 4, specifically the Complete Edition, because I played all these games multiple times. The original Grand Theft Auto 4 was really cool, and I liked how for the first time in the series, you could make decisions that altered the ending depending on the choices that you made. Certain characters would live or die, and then Grand Theft Auto, The Ballad of Tony, was of gay Tony was kind of the game that kind of felt like the most like San Andreas. It felt kind of a little bit more arcadey 
and over the top and fun. And then Grand Theft Auto, The Lost and The Damned also kind of felt like that. And it was really cool being in the biker gang, riding a motorcycle everywhere you went in this game. And these games were just a ton of fun. I beat them all multiple times back then. And unfortunately, I don't have my copy of that game because I lent it to a neighbor and, you know, there was a bunch of brothers and they never gave it back. How many people have had that happen? You lent a game out to someone as a kid and never got it back. But anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you so much, Fem Trooper, for inspiring me to make this video. I will have her video linked in the description of this video. Make sure you go check it out. And if you're not already, please subscribe to the channel. And if you like this content, please hit that like button. Until the next video, catch you later.